Hey everybody, and welcome back to Tens of Motorsports. Today is my big, messy table. But before we get into today's content, make sure you are subscribed to the channel, like if you enjoy this type of video, and also make sure to check us out on Instagram, Tenza underscore motorsports, where we do giveaways to our follow list. Also, make sure to check out our link tree in the bio of our Instagram, where we have build lists for all the cars. In the description of this video, we'll have the build list to the disrespected M3 that we are building. And as always, if you have any comments or questions, leave them down in the comment section below. Now, as you can see here, we are building a toggle switch panel. Uh, I do have some of this built already, mostly the panel itself. Um, we cut that out of Alumalite. And then as you can see here also, it is kind of like a snow leopard print. Now this car is for my wife, so whatever pink and leopard print and cheetah print, whatever she wants, that's what we've been doing. So the toggle switch panel there, we looked at buying one like I had, but they've gone up from like 70 bucks to $100 and she wanted some different designs on it and I thought, well, if we're gonna do custom designs on it, where we don't need it to be carbon fiber, there's no reason to buy carbon fiber. What I did instead was grabbed a piece of cardboard and I basically made it so that it was the exact shape of the upper vents, the radio, and then the AC and the heater controls. So this is about nine inches tall, about 10 inches wide or so. It's just a bit of a rectangle. And then what I did was I placed it on some Alumalite and cut it out. Now, everything that we are gonna be using for this toggle switch panel, I will be leaving in the description below. The important part of today is I wanna talk about a few things that people don't mention when they're building toggle switch panels. A lot of the things that I have ran into that don't always get onto camera, things like that. Because building a toggle switch panel is pretty easy. You either buy one or you build one, and then you drill holes and put your toggles in. And that's really it. The things that I wanna talk about today is the pigtails that I use, and some of the spacing on the toggle switch panel that nobody seems to talk about. So this is the wiring harness that I use, and I actually built these, and I'll have these linked in the description below. This is a 12 pin, so you can see here on each side there's gonna be six, and then six, and then I have them matching from side to side, so when you plug them in together, in and out, in and out, in and out. So it depends on what toggle switch you're running, so you'll have power in, it'll go to the toggle switch, and it'll go power back out to whatever item that you're running or ground or over to a relay, whatever you're building. They're really actually not that difficult to do. You do need uh, two different types of tools and we'll go over those in a second. But yeah, the wire harness, this is really important to me. This is, I, I hate wire harnesses where you go to undo it and you go to pull on it and you can't get it apart. This is so easy, so easy to get on and off. I absolutely love it. And you have to go put all these pins in individual. Yeah, it's a bit of a process, but it's absolutely worth it. All right, so this project is gonna be done with these pliers here. I'll have these linked in the description below. I don't exactly know what they are called, but what they do is they wrap the pins that are used in the harness around the wire. And right here, you can see the different gauges of wire. It'll actually tell you which one to use. You'll crimp them and then you'll click them into the harness themselves. This is a pair of wire strippers. I like this style better than like the ones that you squeeze and like pull the wire through. I hate using those. So um, you don't need to strip a bunch of wire, like literally like this much wire, just enough to have the crimp make a really good firm uh, grab. All right, so here they are done. Now you can see that I have put some vinyl on them so that you know which harness goes where. The other thing I did was that the colors are not the same. If you're paying attention, there's no way you can mix these up. The other thing that I do, you've got your female and your male, and then on this side here, you have your, your female and your male, and I'll actually have them opposite. So the only way to mix these up is to actually plug them into each other this way. So this goes to the toggle switch panel, this goes to the car. So like I said, the only way to mix these up is if you plug them into each other and then that's why I've color coded them. So that's how I deal with those. And now that those are all done and built, uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is be adding resistors to all of our LEDs that we're gonna be using. So in this case, I've got a blue one in my car that's burnt out. So I'm gonna be replacing one of those. And then we're gonna be using a blue one in this toggle switch panel and the rest of them will be pink. I bought 15 resistors. Um, they are a 560 ohm. 
Uh, if you don't want to run them on the raggedy edge, you can go higher than this. Like uh, I think they make a 690 or something like that. The only difference here is that it changes the brightness, but unless you're putting like a 2K on there, it's it's not really gonna change much. You won't really see the difference between a 560 and a 690 or whatever the other number is. The only reason I know that is because I talked to the guy over at Radio Shack, and yes, we still have one here locally. I'm not sure if it's privately owned or what's going on with that, but we still have a Radio Shack, so that's why I was able to get uh, some of these pieces from. Um, I have this little tester here. This actually came off one of those little um, testers that you see when you're at the store like O'Reilly's, AutoZone, Walmart, and you're, you're pushing the button testing the LEDs, that's what's in there. And this is two nine volt batteries. And so this actually produces 18 volts, which is much higher than 14.4. So I grabbed one of these and I actually put it on this and ran it and I taped the button down so it was running constantly and it ran for about two hours and it didn't have any issues. So, so if it can handle this, it should be able to handle the 12 to 14 volt system on your car. When you go to space these, these guys here, this is a, a covered toggle switch, and, and I've got pink on it right now because um, our black ones aren't in yet, and I just was kind of uh, seeing what this is going to look like if we put a little bit of pink on it. So when we get the ones in, they'll be black, and then I'll have a strip of pink over the front. So when you're looking at it, it looks like a strip of pink. Um, this is gonna be built very similar to my toggle switch panel in my race car. And it doesn't matter what colors you use, this process is gonna be the same no matter what you do. These covered toggle switches kind of mess you up a little bit because the toggle switch is here and the this little cover goes so far up. If you lined up all your toggles and then put these on, your whole row is gonna sit up like a half an inch higher than you thought it was gonna be. Where I've got the USB connector, so that would be this guy here, this is a, a charger. And this is really cool because it's gonna have the new USB-C and then just a standard USB uh, charger on it. And I'll have this so that it's constantly running, so whether the car is on, off, whatever position it's on, as long as the battery's connected, you can charge your phone. That's gonna sit here, and then we've got a couple spare switches that don't actually have any um, use right now, but we're gonna have them installed. And we've got our e-stop here. Uh, this is just a phony one. The actual e-stop is this one here, because I went through and customized it. it used to look like this. Uh, wrap that black, put some white lettering on it, and then just painted that pink. But it still works the same. Push to shut, twist to reset. And then we have our fan switch here. And it's a 50 amp switch. Um, your fan is a 40 amp. I'm probably gonna be putting a fuse on that but I always run a bigger toggle if I know that the thing that we're powering is high voltage, even though you really shouldn't use your toggle switch as a fuse. That's normally a pretty bad idea. And I'm sorry if I'm rambling and kind of going off topic here and there because this is it's a lot of work. I mean, you can see the mess here. It doesn't matter how many times I build one of these, it's a giant mess and it takes several days to just kind of get everything together and, and have it how you want it. And where I had my wife, walk me through how she wants everything to work on this panel that's taken even longer. Now one of the bigger things we ran into was getting some LEDs. So this is just the um, housing mounting piece. And then we bought LEDs like this. Now we bought a pack of 100, so 10 of each color, and there's white, blue, green, pink, red, yellow, orange, purple, a whole bunch of different colors. The reason for that is because we wanted to have pink on the board. We're gonna have the fan run blue, so that when you, when you see that on, it's blue, and then everything else will be pink. And then the ones above this one here, where it's your USB cable, that's basically just gonna be a dummy one. It's just gonna make it so that it looks like it's uniform. So you have a line of switches and a line of lights, a line of switches and a line of lights. Very similar to my toggle switch panel. This is going to be the push button start. Um, this is actually from a arcade game that I found on eBay. Uh, I think I got like eight of these or six of them or something like that for like 10 bucks. So kind of cool. Obviously this isn't a strong enough switch to have anything powerful run through it. So this is gonna run to a relay, but really excited about those. That'll be cool. This top line here will be all just these covered toggle switches. When you hit your e-stop button, this red light here turns on. On this one, we're actually gonna have the light sit above it. So again, we're gonna have to be really careful because this can't be 
lined up with the rest of this, and this can't be lined up with the rest of those because it's going to overlap. So what we're going to do is we're going to run the LEDs in a straight line, and then down here we're going to find the topmost point of these three, and we're going to line those up so that they're all the same, and then this one right here and this one right here will actually be centered based on this. It won't be centered with the toggle because the toggle is down here. It'll actually be centered based on the entire toggle switch cover itself. So hopefully some of this stuff makes sense. Um, again, it, it, there's there's so much to this. It's not just slap some toggles on a on a piece of plywood and you're done. I would say you can build a panel between 100 to 150 bucks depending on what you want to do. If you want to just pre-buy those panels that have like the five switches and the push button start, the downside of those is that they're generic. You're going to have to find a place to put them. That's kind of it. So, I mean, you can do that kind of stuff. And, and I've thought about it. We almost did it for this car, but I just, I wanted it to be, you know, a custom panel because technically I could have just built this piece and then just bought two of those pre-built ones and just bolt it to it. But I, I don't know. Basically, I'm going to get all this ready so that I can start drilling the holes. All right, so this is how it's gonna look. And let me see if I can get some light here. Those are pink, They're, they look a little red on camera, but that's pink, and you can see it's a black switch. So these just came in the mail like 35, 40 minutes ago. So pretty excited about that. Um, we're going to run just one, one strip of pink over the front, and it looks pretty close where this is pink wrapped over black, which takes the color down just a notch, and this right here, which is a spray paint. So I was worried these two pinks wouldn't match, but they look pretty good on camera, um, and in person they're actually a little bit closer than on camera. So yeah, we're just gonna finish these up, and once those are finished up, the, the panel's basically done. There's gonna be five across the top, two on the bottom, and then we'll go slip it into the car and see what it looks like. And here the panel is in the dash of the car. Now it's just set in there, nothing's wired up. Um, I'll probably do another video or have some explanation on how I wired things. One more time for all of this, so we got uh, pink, 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 pink and pink, and then blue for the fan. This is a two-stage switch, so high and then low will be down. You got your e-stop here. Uh, those two will be extras for right now, just spares. And then this is our USB and our USB-C charger. I think that's pretty cool. That'll be on all the time. This will be a dummy light. So, yeah, pretty sweet. Uh, we're very excited to get this uh, put in the rest of the way. Obviously, we're missing trim here, so she's happy with it. All the pink matches, everything looks like it's going to turn out just like we hoped for. Thanks, everybody, so much for watching. If you have any comments or questions, leave them down in the comment section below. If you are interested in any of these parts, um, the, sa the same process, like we've said earlier, the same process for building your own toggle switch panel. If you don't want pink, don't, don't get pink. If you don't want leopard print, don't do leopard print. Just... Make a panel, uh, wrap it black, buy one out of carbon fiber. You can buy these in red, blue, black. Uh, I think there's green ones. You can make this however you want, and that's the cool thing about it. This light here doesn't have to be that light. These ones here, you don't even have to have. I mean, like, this is basically one square foot of whatever you want it to be, completely custom for your car. And I've always liked that about building race cars is just the absolute control to build whatever you want. And I just think that's like probably one of the most fun things about building a car. And I know that I get caught up in little things like this where you've got an entire car and I'm sitting here focusing on this little square foot. It's the same thing with the headlights and same thing with, you know, it, it, that kind of stuff pops up all over the car and people are constantly asking about it. So that's why I decided to show all of you what we did. So very happy with it. Um, thanks so much for watching. Please follow us on our Instagram for this car, Nikki underscore nightmare 46. And make sure you're following us on our main channel, Tenza underscore motorsports, where we do giveaways. All you have to do to be part of those giveaways is being one of our followers on our follow list. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.
Bam!